Steve Rice will be talking about his open source uh, radio transceiver project to Rice Leaf. Okay. Okay, basically, uh, I, I'm Royce and I'm an amateur radio operator. So right now, I'm going to share my project on a radio transceiver that I've been, I've been planning and still am building right now. So basically, amateur radio equipment can be very expensive, especially those of you who are licensed in this uh, place like Sayani who should know that it can be quite expensive. So, so yeah, so I was thinking, since amateur radio is all about exper technical experimentation and learning in the field of uh, amateur radio, why not try to build something like an amateur radio transceiver? So the, so the goals for my transceiver here is that I want to use only the most common and easy to obtain parts like uh, 2N2222s two, 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 and such. Uh, basically, I want to make the circuit as simple as possible and make it easy to improve and upgrade. And these are the currently planned features. Basically, the receiver end is a direct conversion receiver. And I want to have things like frequency, digital frequency without variable frequency and just simple Morse code transmission for now, basically. And these are the planned features for the future, which are single sideband transmission, which is a form of amplitude modulation, controlled by uh, serial port and such, and well, basically variable RF power output. So I'm going to talk about the circuits and ideas I used that are, that are here, used in this uh, demo that I have here. This is just a, transmit, uh, just a transmit demonstration, and I don't have a receiver here, so I will have to use, so later after this, we'll have to use a frequency counter to show that there is output. So this project is based of a pixie kit transceiver, which uh, can be easily found online on uh, eBay and such. I wanted to use a discrete transistor for oscillator stage, like how I did it for my amplitude modulation transmitter project a few months ago. <coughs> but I read this article about the NE602, and since I had the SA612, which is a newer version of this chip, I might as well just use it. So you have this uh, internal uh, circuit here, which, and you have your oscillator stage at pin 6 and 7, which is just NPN transistor, NEF. That, that sorry. So I can just put a crystal there and the emitter will be output to my, uh, the output at the emitter will be going to my uh, power amplifier and th that's that for your, for your transmit stage actually. But if I want to receive a signal, since I have two Gilbert cells here, I could take the, the difference of the signal, of the received signal from my antenna and the oscillator input and, basic, and that will give me my audio frequency. So I, I do have a little bit offset though, but that will give me my audio frequency and it essentially is just a product detector. For in a pixie kit, as the transistor over here, Q2, it, when you key down the, the key over here, it acts like a RF power amplifier, amplifies your signal front oscillator. <coughs> but once you unkey, it still works, it's still odd. You'll notice that there is still a very small signal at the antenna because I want to mix the input my input, which is a receive signal, and my oscillator input, and I get back my audio frequency, which you hear as this and does at the speaker end. And I want to also vary my oscillator frequency. So I, will, so I was thinking, there is a parameter called the typical total capacitance in, in a lot of diodes. How can we exploit this? So basically, it, most of the data sheets will give you uh, we'll give you a graph and it'll say, hey, for a certain reverse voltage, I can have a certain amount of uh, capacitance ba based on my voltage. So if that's the case, since a lot of oscillators, or variable frequency oscillators, they work by having a variable capacitor to pull the crystal, what I could do is that I could, I could put a diode, something like 1F5158, which has quite a bit of a reverse capacitance. I, I might be able to use that to tune the frequency. And I tried the experiment this morning, and it does seem to work. I'm, I'm sorry, it's a bit blur, but, if, but you can see when I try to vary the frequency, it, it's, you can see that it varies slightly, just quite a bit, and such. So for the power amplifier stage, I'll just use a very simple 2 n two 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 and just connect it to my oscillator stage. It is a very low power and a very unoptimized circuit because I haven't done things like impedance matching or filtering of harmonics and such, which is required essential. You're trying to build a, a transceiver for use uh, on air. So and here just a bit simulation results, not much basically. And a simple transmission test. 
So I have my uh, receiver at home set up. You should hear that. Okay, I think. Okay. Mm, the, wait, the video is a bit. The video. Well, basically, that's just simple transmission right, uh, and such. I, so I, and I also tried something just because uh, in, during competitions, especially Morse code competitions and such on the air, I find that sometimes signals are so fast that, I, that a human really cannot copy it. Sometimes it gets signals as fast as 50 words per minute and such. And I was, and I was quite uh, amazed how, how could someone actually trans, transmit a Morse code signal that fast. I found out how. Basically this. You just use a computer to do it for you. Yeah, you can even set this 50 or 60 words per minute, up to you. You just, you basically, you just have a opto isolator, the circuit just opto isolator going to the key input, and that just basically keys the, the transmitter. And that's it, really. And here's the output waveform that we measured from our oscilloscope. And if you're interested, I, this link is where I'll be putting up things like my source code, my circuits, and, and such in the future. So if you're interested, I'd like to help out, you can just come over here. You may be able to commit a few sets of, of code and such if you're interested. And any questions? Okay, basically I'm transmitting on for about 14 megahertz. The crystal I'm using is a 14 megahertz crystal. Though in my experiments, I find that it's slightly off, just slightly below 14 megahertz. So basically, I, is you're based on your reverse capacitance. I'm trying to pull based, because as I said earlier, there's a diode, and I'm using a reverse capacitor to pull the frequency and vary the frequency. However, in my experiment that I've done this morning, it seems like the the frequency drops below 14, which is technically not allowed when you're trying to do it on air yeah. and such. Any other questions? You're using the breadboard, do you think that's... Uh, to be honest, do you, if you're going to use a breadboard, you'll find all sorts of uh, weird and, and funny uh, quirks and such. A breadboard, since it's made of a lot of strips and such, there's a lot of things like capacitors all that. And to be honest, I do not recommend it. The only... And yes, I'm using one only for only for quick prototype and uh, and test. Uh, probably not because in this current configuration, what happens is that <coughs> I found that the I have I need to put it in parallel before the oscillator could start. I'm not sure why what exactly happened, but I need to put the the, sorry, the capacitor in parallel, and that actually pulls the frequency down. To put it in series to the crystal, it will pull it up higher. So I need to work on the oscillator stage to make it more stable and have more, and, and so I can drive my uh, power amplifier and such. And th are there any other questions? Well, basically that's the end. And if you want, after the after hack, where I can just uh, power this up and show you uh, the frequency output and such. Well, that's it. Thank you.